Surftech Solutions Surveying and Mapping. I want to welcome everyone to the January 2009 video newsletter. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up in this month's video newsletter. But first, I want to give a special congratulations to James Finley of Surftech Solutions for becoming a licensed arborist. We're very proud of James. He passed the test on his first try. We've got a really cool new video feature called Tells from the Field where different guys and girls of Surftech Solutions give some of their thoughts and some stories on some pretty far out stuff that may have happened in the field and as anybody who knows anything about surveying or construction a lot of times you experience some uh, pretty far out stuff. So we've got some of those really cool stories and to start with we're going to be talking with Greg Johnston and I won't spoil it but it's uh, it's pretty interesting. We also have another a different kind of video dealing with uh, volumetric surveying in less than favorable conditions. So I will leave that to your imagination and once you see it uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. We've also added a long format video of Surtech Solutions Company President David O'Brien speaking with us in a long format interview. It's really interesting. We've got a lot of great information in there so we hope that you'll check that out as well. In keeping with our new green initiative, we've also added a really cool new feature and we're really excited to have it. It's a really cool thing for us. It's a coloring book called It's Raining and it also comes with the teacher's aid. It teaches kids about water conservation, environmental issues, and stuff like that. Hope that you'll check it out. You can get to the Surtech Green page again on the main page over in the side column. Since what does it mean to go green? Click on that. That'll take you to the page. You can learn more about that. So I want to thank you for viewing this month's video newsletter. So sit back, relax, and I will see you in 30. We were doing a stake out on a retention pond that hadn't been demucked. So we staked out the top of the bank. Everything was good on that. They needed stakes for the toe because they could get the dozers into the bottom of it to find out how deep it needed to go. Called out the first day and looked at it and said, there's no freaking way I'm doing this because <laughs> it's just too dangerous. I'm going to get stuck if I go out there. Called Stacy. Stacy's like, all right, well, I'll come back. So we went out to do another job, and client still didn't demuck it, and called us back the next day and said, no, it's got to be done. So we go back the next day, and I'm looking at it, and we get about 100 foot into the littoral shelf line, and we're okay for right then, and the eye man tells me to go 15 feet to the right. And I'm like, oh, I guess I could try this. <laughs> Start walking, mud just swamping under my feet, so I'm like, eh, this doesn't feel too safe. Had the eye man shoot me again, see how much further I need to go. I was still like eight feet away from where I need to go. And how deep were you in the water at this point? At, at this point, I'm only maybe to my knees, so it wasn't too bad. It didn't seem like it was going to be that bad. It was wet, but that wasn't the biggest problem. All right. So I stop and get on the radio and have him shoot me again, and the whole time I'm sinking. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. I, I, Clip the radio back into my cell and try to walk and realize I'm not going anywhere. Oh man! <laughs> so at this time, I'm I'm in the water's up to my waist now. I'm in the the mud to my knees when I call the Seth over and I'm like, Hey Seth, I'm gonna need help getting out of here. Oh man! So he comes from the gun a couple hundred feet away, and by the time he gets there, it's just quicksand, and I'm sinking further and further. <laughs> 
So I'm up to my thigh, and I can't push myself out because there's nothing hard enough to get around there. Oh, man. So he goes and runs and finds one of the construction guys. They come over, and they all laugh. <laughs> and I'm like, those bastards. I told them I couldn't do this in the first place. Right. So they're trying to take a ways to get me out. And they, they walk out a little bit of the ways, and I threw them all the equipment so it wouldn't get wet in my phone, and I didn't want to ruin that. Right. <laughs> So I'm waiting, and they walk out a little bit trying to give me the hand to push me up. Well, that, that, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> well, this time I'm down to my waist in mud, and oh. I'm not going anywhere. So they decide to bring over a, a backhoe, and they're going <laughs> to try to lift me out with it. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's just hurry up. <laughs> well, it takes them a few minutes to get over there, and I'm continually thinking. So we're trying to be safe about it because the worst thing you do is get cut by one of those things, especially yeah. in that situation. <laughs> so they lift it to where it's right above my head and it's off to the side of me, and I try grabbing onto it and have them lift me up with that. Well, it's not pulling me anywhere, so I just they my arms aren't strong enough, and I couldn't hold on while they're trying to pull me. <laughs> So then somebody had the bright idea of putting a rope around it and sticking the rope underneath my oh, armpit, oh, and, and they'll pull me out that way. Well, I thankfully stopped really thinking anymore. <laughs> I, I realized the more I struggled with it, the deeper I was going to go. Yeah. So I stopped struggling. I stayed about waist deep. It was might have been my belly button by about that time. They get the rope around me, and we put it on there. They start lifting, and I think that my arms are going to get pulled off. It's oh, the worst God. pain that you can imagine. Yeah. They keep lifting. They can't hear me going, stop, stop. <laughs> so they finally stop that. We decide, well, we're going to demuck this pond to be in it. Oh, so <laughs> being as careful as he was, he was a good operator. He didn't cut me anything, but he, he dug all around me. Almost to the point where they could get me out, but not quite. Eventually, he got close enough to me and dug deep enough that he dug all the way across my legs to where, without hitting my legs, that's how good he was. But oh, I was able to put my knees on it, and he lifted me up in the bucket and put me safe down on shore. <laughs> Looking back, it was the worst day of surveying I ever had at the time, but looking back now, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Humble when victorious, be noble in defeat. Be there when your neighbor hasn't got enough to eat. Try to love your enemies and always be aware that in the Super Bowl of life, the tortoise beats the hare.